How's it going everybody? Noah with Madison Antling coming back at you guys with another Shop Talk video here on the porch. And as you can see over this way, it's snowing. Um, you guys are probably seeing this the Monday after opening weekend of the Wisconsin gun deer season. So to those of you who went hunting this weekend, hopefully you guys had a good hunt. Uh, for those of you who maybe haven't been out yet, hopefully you have good luck the rest of the season here. And I am probably in a tree right now. But uh, despite the fact that there is a bunch of gross uh, frozen white stuff outside right now, uh, I do want to answer one of your questions, and that is asking about my ideal rod and reel and line and bait setup for fishing jerk baits after dark for late fall walleyes. And right now is the time to do it. And what's really cool is you could go hunting all day, you know, sit in the morning, you could do an all day sit, sit in the evening. By the time you are done with your evening sit and it's dark and you're walking back, that's when the walleye bite just about starts to, to heat up. And it runs pretty much all night long into the early morning. So it's actually kind of a cool way you can do a little surf and turf in the same day if you're feeling up to it. But some of the best walleye fishing, in my opinion, of the year comes real late, right? Basically all the way up until we get ice. And then that early ice period obviously is really good too. But what's cool is a lot of these walleyes push up super shallow at night. They're very easy to access either by boat or from shore. You could go to boat launches and parks and catch walleyes right from shore. You don't even need a boat. Um, but if you want to take a boat, you certainly can. Just fishing shallow water. And since it's post turnover, the water's clear. Shine a light in the water. You see some walleyes, shut your light off, cast and catch them. It's really that simple. So what I wanted to show you guys is my ideal setup for fishing jerk baits here in the fall. Same stuff I use in the spring but we're using it here in the fall, so here we go. So I tend to get a little bit picky sometimes about the equipment that I like to use as far as like specifics, you know, my, my main line, my leader material, uh, little tweaks to baits, things like that, but if I had to pick one rod and reel combo to go out and do this nighttime jerkbait walleye fishing, uh, it would have to be this guy. This is the seven foot three Fox River rod. This is a medium light spinning rod, has a nice, um, it's kind of in between a moderate and a fast action. Uh, it has a nice soft tip to it. So uh, what that does is it helps you prevent um, overworking the bait, okay? We're fishing cold water, right? You know, obviously today it's pretty stinking cold out. When you're watching this, it's pretty stinking cold out. Uh, we're looking at water temps, you know, anywhere 50 degrees and, and below, right? Basically up until ice up. So the, the key to being successful with this jerk bait stuff is not to overwork the bait to make sure that you are um, you know, pre presenting it in a realistic fashion, right? Fish aren't screaming around right now, swimming super, super fast, right? The water's cold, their metabolisms are lower, they're cold, they're moving slow. So having a rod that has a nice soft tip to it or a more moderate action uh, is a good way to prevent you from overworking the bait. So my rod of choice here, again, the Fox River 7.3 medium light. Uh, also, if you're interested in checking any of these Fox River rods out, you can use my promo code right here I've got it on the screen here. I'll also have it in the description to get 10% off your order from Fox River Rods. Uh, if nothing else, it, it's basically free shipping. And if you've bought rods at all in the last couple of years, you know how expensive it is to ship fishing rods. So check that out. Please check out Fox River Rods. But um, really, really like these. I've used them for drop shotting. I've used them for live bait rigging. I fish slip bobbers with them. They are an awesome jerk bait rod as well. In fact, that's the first thing I ever did with these when I first got them at the start of the season, jerk bait fishing after dark for walleyes. So, uh, what else do we have going on here? We got our bait, we'll talk about that in a second. On the real end of things, I've got an Okuma. This is a Helios SX. Um, this is a 3000 size. Uh, great drag, super smooth, really nice reel, very comfortable to fish. Um, honestly, any 2500 to 3000 size reel works just fine. In fact, I've got another one here we're gonna talk about in just a second. This is an Okuma Epixer. A um, little more budget-minded reel. Uh, the new Sam RHD, another great option. I've been fishing with that, really enjoying it. It's working great in the cold weather. Uh, in fact, better than a lot of other reels at that price point do in cold weather. Uh, so very impressed with that one. Uh, but the, the reel, not quite as critical here, but obviously something that's gonna hold up to cold weather fishing. Uh, the line, I've got braid on here. This is 15 pound. This happens to be uh, Suffix 832. Uh, in neon green. Um, I do like the bright colored braids. It's nice to be able to see, especially when a customer's reeling in a fish, it's easy for me to see exactly where that fish is. Just follow the glowing green line, right? And at the end of it, hopefully there's a pot of gold or at least a gold fish. So 
Um, pretty simple, you know, and this is something you could use for lots of different applications too, not just not just this. So if you're looking for a multitasker, maybe you don't have a big budget to go buy super technique specific equipment, you can use this for all kinds of different stuff too. It's a great jigging stick, slip bobber rod, I mean, live bait rigging, whatever you wanna do with it. It really is a great setup for just about everything. So um, with that, let's let's get into the nitty gritty. Let's talk some baits and leaders and, and kind of more um, more technical stuff here. So I'm willing to bet that most of you, uh, when I held this up the first time, you're looking to see what the bait was. And uh, honestly, any suspending or slow rising jerk bait this time of year or in the spring is gonna work great. Uh, your Husky Jerks, your Vision 110s, your Rogues, uh, Rip Stops, and this one happens to be a Shadow Wrap. That is a number nine Rapala Shadow Wrap. This is a slow rising bait. I think this is in real perch or live perch or something. Um, honestly, color isn't something I pay too terribly much attention to. Uh, but obviously, clear water, more natural colors. You can't go wrong with perch. Basically, anywhere that walleyes live, there's probably perch. Um, but your, you know, your your blues, greens, whites, um, things like that. Just kind of keep it keep it simple. If the water's dirty, maybe fire it up with some fire tiger, something a little brighter. Um, but for the most part any suspending jerk bait. In fact, this one was really, really good on a recent trip here on the Madison chain. I'm gonna throw a couple of pictures up here. Um, those boys got it done. Uh, they, they caught a whole bunch of fish. We got a nice big pike, um, which we're gonna talk about here in just a second, um, but all fishing super shallow. Those fish were all in about three feet of water on a current seam and just fishing really slow. Twitch, twitch, and let it hang five, six seconds. Twitch, twitch, let it hang five, six seconds, and they hit it on the pause. Sometimes it just about ripped the rod out of your hand. Other times it's like a little tiny tick, but this can be such an effective way to catch fish. And every night the, the cadence might be a little different. They may have a different preference on baits or profile. So you gotta play around a little bit, but once you figure out what they want, it's game over. So another thing that you guys may have noticed on this setup here is I do actually have a leader. Now, do you have to use a leader? Absolutely not. But fishing here in southern Wisconsin, especially where I fish most of the time here on the Madison Chain of Lakes, we got pike and we got muskies. And uh, that pike that I just showed you guys, we would not have caught if we did not have a leader. So uh, I like to tie my own leaders. Uh, the material I used to get uh, apparently is not available anymore. So if you could find Terminator brand tieable titanium wire, buy it. Uh, you know, 15, 20 pound test. Uh, there's another brand that I use too. It's called Not Too Kinky. Uh, it's a nickel titanium alloy wire. Uh, no, I don't get paid to, to tell you about this, but you can twist it up, do all kinds of stuff, and it, it goes back to being straight. It doesn't kink like a steel wire does. And it's super thin diameter, super, super thin. Um, I have a little tiny swivel on here and a little tiny snap, and this leader is light enough that it actually doesn't mess with the action of the bait doesn't change the way that this bait suspends or runs. And it's basically just a little insurance policy that if you do hook a pike or a muskie, or rather when you hook a pike or a muskie, you get to keep your bait and you probably get to catch that fish. Um, if that's not an option for you, 12 to 15 pound fluoro works just fine. Uh, the walleyes do not care about this one bit. They could not care less. When they go into kill mode, they don't care. They're looking at this. They're not looking at this. So don't worry about that. Um, otherwise, you know, that, that's basically it, guys. I mean, it's it's incredibly simple. I just put that crankbait straight into the carpet. Go me. Uh, <laughs> yeah, seven foot, or sorry, seven three rods in a not super tall ceiling. That's that's a good idea. But generally speaking, that that's gonna work 90% of the time. Now, obviously, as it gets later in the year, we're dealing with sub-freezing temperatures. And if any of you have ever fished braid, when it gets cold out, you know that it ices up pretty bad, your guides ice up, and then it's just no fun. It's really hard to fish. So one way that I combat that is uh, by doing a little line swap here. So I always have a couple rods rigged up with 10 pound mono. Uh, this is soft steel mono. You could use fluorocarbon if you want as well. I think that mono works a little bit better. It's a little softer than fluoro, so I think it works a little better in the cold. Um, 10 pound is plenty. You can reel in a muskie, a pike, any walleye you hook, you can land on 10 pound mono. Uh, you got the stretch, you got the medium light power rod. Um, and as long as you know how to fight fish, don't worry about it. You'll be totally fine. But I do think that mono uh, fish is better in the cold being that it doesn't ice up quite as easily as braid does. And yes, mono has memory. Yes, when it gets cold, the memory gets worse, but that's why I'm using 10. 
You could probably even go down to eight if you really wanted to, but because we do run into bigger fish around here, I think 10's perfect. If you go to a 12 or a 15, then you start getting some line twist problems, some memory issues, especially when it gets cold. I think 10 is perfect. So when it gets really, really cold out, if I know it's gonna be below freezing, especially if it's well below freezing, you know, 20s or less, um, if I'm going fishing, that's a big if, um, I'm going mono. It just seems to work better, okay? Um, your casting distance may not be quite as far, but I can promise you, you won't be able to cast very far with braid either when your guides all freeze up and your line freezes up and your line roller freezes up on your reel. It's not very fun. So that is a good way to solve the, uh, the frozen line problem. So that's pretty much it guys. I mean, not, not really a whole heck of a lot else to say. Um, again, check out Fox River Rods. I've got the link in the description below as well as the 10% uh, off code. And uh, if you're looking for some reels, Okuma's got some really, really cool new stuff coming out. And uh, obviously the tried and true stuff, this Helios SX I've had for a while now, beat the ever loving crap out of it. And it's still rolling even in super cold weather. And uh, just, just play around with it, have fun. You know, it doesn't have to be a giant expedition to go do this. You just grab a, you know, a Plano box, throw some jerk baits in it, grab a, you know, a net, measuring board, headlamp, you're on your way, go catch some fish. So. Hopefully you guys are taking advantage of some fun fall fishing here. Um, obviously with, with hunting and stuff going on, it's hard for me to choose which one I wanna do, but I've been lucky enough to be able to do both. And uh, hopefully you guys are having fun, being safe out there, and we'll see you on the next episode. And please continue to drop comments below, ask your questions down below. Uh, if you don't feel like posting them on YouTube, send them to me on Instagram, Facebook, email. I'll have all that info down in the description as well. So let's keep this thing rolling, guys. Thank you so much for your questions, and I'll see you on the next episode.